Okay. When we talk about purpose, it's like, you know, sometimes we're searching for something and it's already like what's in your hand? In your what hand. can you already do? What are you already skilled to do? What what has God already placed um, in you? What do you what makes you excited? And food excited. <laughs> It's funny to say, but it excited me. It's just like everything, just from the garnish to the, now I'm learning more about, you know, how to manipulate food to make it into a garnish instead of putting a flower here and there on it. Mm. Like I'm learning more about the craft of food and not just, you know, the seasonings and everything. So I enjoy when I'm on my travels, picking up seasonings. Like I just ran out of a seasoning I bought in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. So I love learning about food and experimenting. The gift that looks good on you. You were born with a grace. Uh. The gift that looks good on you. That grace is your gift. Yeah. The gift that looks good on you. It's a divine enablement. The gift that looks good on you. If you work your grace, the grace will work for you. Company, teach the lesson. The systems of the world. Systems. We try to take your confidence. Yes, they will. But these systems were designed. Designed. To make you doubt what heaven said. Don't you doubt. The systems of the world. These systems. We try to take your confidence. Yes, they will. But these systems were designed. Designed. To make you sit down on your gift. Don't you let them. But the gift God gave to you. This gift. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Mm -hmm. I'm super excited to have with me here Danielle Avery, the owner of A Joy to Serve Catering, and she is going to make my favorite <laughs> food, my all-time favorite food yes. in the whole entire world. I can eat this every single day, mm -hmm. baked macaroni and cheese. Yes. Well, Jessica, thank you for having me here. Thank you for coming. I can't wait to eat. <laughs> I know that's right. I can't wait to eat. So we're going to open up in a word of prayer. And okay. you're going to give us your secret recipe. Okay. Sounds good. All right. All right. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much for this day, this opportunity. We thank you for the vision that you've given us. God, we just thank you that we can include you in everything that we do. With you, all things are possible. And God, we thank you that you give us gifts and talents that make room for us, oh God. Lord, we ask you to bless this segment, bless this conversation, yes, bless Lord. this food that we're about to partake. We just ask that you have your way. We invite you in the midst of us, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, bless our listeners, God. Yes, Let them learn something. Let them be able to include this in their dinner and in, in their food plans, God. We just thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, so we have our ingredients here. Can you tell yes. us what we need to start making this dish? So um, basically, you need a box of elbow macaroni noodles. Okay. And um, I have already have some right here, already boiled. I boil them with about a tablespoon to two tablespoons of chicken bouillon powder. Oh. Um, it gives it flavor. It's like, you know, normally you would salt your water when you boil your noodles, but the chicken bouillon just gives it the extra um, for, for the noodle. Um, so I have some elbow noodles, a box boiled already. Uh, we want to do three eggs for a half pan of mac and cheese. If you're using a smaller pan, you can use less eggs. Uh, we have some paprika that goes in the seasonings, um, that goes inside of the cream mixture right here, and also goes on top of the final product before you put it in the oven. Sour cream is my little secret <laughs> to make it extra, extra creamy. Um, you have a pint of heavy cream, and in the seasoning mix right here, it is uh, paprika, seasoning salt, garlic powder, and pepper. And that will all go into the cream mixture. And then for the cheeses, we have <laughs> uh, mozzarella cheese, sharp cheddar, and Kobe Jack Monterey cheese. And I prefer to have block cheese and grate it myself because the cheese melts better. Mm -hmm. And also it's better for you because the shredded cheese at the store has like a um, it's some kind of, it's like, it, it's some kind of ingredient that keeps it together. I think it's like wood pulp okay. and it's not really going to break down your cheese. That's why it'll stay right. to get, like it'll stay separated in the bag. So after we grate that in the food processor, um, I have it all here for, for us to assemble the mac and cheese. Okay, cool. 
So when did you start cooking? Like, tell us your background about cooking. So I started cooking when I was younger. Um, one thing, like maybe around six or seven, and I was only making breakfast, y'all. I was not <laughs> the caterer at all. Um, my grandma, she was really good with teaching me how to make, you know, French toast. Uh, bacon, home fries, like I can make a mean breakfast at that age. <laughs> and you know, um, as I grew up, I always loved food. I was the type of girl that always had snacks in my pocketbook. Like I, <laughs> I'm a foodie. Um, I told my husband one day, I was like, you know, one day we got to do like a diners, drive-in and dives tour around the country mm -hmm. and just tour all the restaurants that um, Guy Fieri does on the show. Um, because I just love food. I love everything about it. I like the smell. I like the presentation. I just love food. Um, but um, growing up, my mom didn't teach me how to cook. Um, I had to kind of learn on my own. And it was discouraging because, you know, you buy all this food and if you don't season it well, if you don't cook mm. it properly, it's a waste of money. Right. And, you know, you're still hungry, so you're going to have to buy food out. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I had to really challenge myself to learn how to cook. So I started learning how to cook when I was 18. I really didn't fully understand it. Um, but it wasn't until, I would say around... 2019, 2020, maybe a little bit before the pandemic, I started really getting into cooking, okay. um, learning new recipes, um, all those pins on Pinterest that I would save. I finally started making them because, you know, we'll start saving stuff and we don't make mm -hmm. it. So I finally started making those recipes, started paying attention to the, the details that, you know, home cooks don't normally pay attention to. I started paying attention to them as a chef. Mm -hmm. And um, we bought our home. Uh, a few years back, I think about two years we've been in a home, and we started having guests come over. And when they came over, had to cook for them because right. we wasn't ordering pizza every time because, you know, <laughs> that adds up. Right, so I right. started cooking, and they started telling me how much they loved my food. And then I started posting about it on my personal Instagram page, and people would say, oh, that looks good. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, maybe something is okay with this basic. I think it's basic, but other people think it's good, so maybe I should start posting more and more about it. And that's how it just blossomed into the craft. But I didn't think about catering until I looked at some bills that I wanted to pay a little bit more of. And I was like, Lord, you know, I want to pay this down, but I don't have the money. And I, I heard, you know, what's in your hands. Mm. So that to me was like. You already know how to cook. It's not something you got to go to school for. It's not something you have to, um, you know, hire somebody else to teach you or whatever. You don't have to pay all this extra money. I can cater or I can sell platters. It wasn't um, necessarily to start doing big weddings or birthday parties or whatever. I just wanted to sell platters like I saw other people do and make that money. So, um... I started, my husband was like, you got to do everything in excellencies mm -hmm. and in order. That's so right. you don't That's want nobody right. suing you, mm -hmm. make you an LLC and make it a legitimate business. And that's what I did. And, you know, I had to take a break last year because I was sick with my son when I was pregnant with my son. And, um, but I'm so grateful that this year I'm able to come back full force and I've been getting booked for weddings and birthday parties. I'm still doing the platter sales every now and then. So, you know, I'm just grateful for the doors that God has opened. Amen. So this is fairly new. Yes. Wow. Yes. Yes. But the love for food has always been there. So okay. when we talk about purpose, it's like, you know, sometimes we're searching for something and it's already like, what's in your hand? In your what can hands. you already do? What are you already skilled to do? What what has God already placed um, in you? What do you? What makes you excited? And food excites. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny to say, but it excited me. It's mm -hmm. just like everything, just from the garnish to the. Now I'm learning more about you know how to manipulate food to make it into a garnish instead of putting the flour here and there on it, mm -hmm. like. I'm learning more about the craft of food and not just, you know, the seasonings and everything. So I enjoy when I'm on my travels, picking up seasonings. Like I just ran out of a seasoning I bought in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. So I love learning about food and experimenting. Amen. Well, let's get started as we learn some okay. more about your story. So right. what you want us to do first. So in the pan, normally what I do is I mix the noodles with the sour cream, but today we're going to mix it with the heavy cream because that's what we did with the one that's in, already in the oven. So just going to start layering. 
And one thing I learned in my many mac and cheese fails <laughs> <laughs> was that if you think you have enough cheese, add some more. Okay. So I like to make sure it's cheesy, cheesy. and um, I don't make a cream sauce because my husband doesn't like it that way and we're going to stick to what we know. Right. And honestly, the person who taught me to make mac and cheese is him. Okay. Yeah. So um, right now, I'm just scooping the cooked noodles into the pan. My hands are clean, so I'm yes, just going to start using hands. my hands. <laughs> now, at home, if I'm catering for somebody, I will definitely have gloves on. Okay. So, you know, just like a lasagna, you add mm. the noodles, then you add the cheese, and then... Okay. Uh, I'm going to move this over here. Okay. And these are this all the cheeses easy. shredded up. And just and you use the food processor to shred your cheese. Yeah. So she didn't <laughs> go through and cut it. No, up. I had a uh, I was making I think it was mac and cheese, but I was grating cheese. I, I don't know exactly what the dish was for, and I got too close to the end uh, and cut my thumb. I uh, said never again. Wow. Well. Never again, and I haven't. Um, I haven't used the grater yet. I still have one, right. <laughs> but I would use um, just regular uh, shredded cheese to save time. But um, the food processor has been my friend. I've been making my baby food with the food processor. Uh, um, any sauces, like I made this roasted veggie pasta and I had to make a sauce for it. Um, so, you know, I use that. So as many different uses for the food processor, it's a great investment. It does take up space on your counter. So make sure you have some storage room for like a pantry or a uh, room in your cabinets or room on your counter. Okay. So the name of your catering company is a joy to serve. We'll give yes. you that name. So... Um, I like feeding people <laughs> and it was just me serving somebody, serving my husband, serving my family, serving our friends when they would come to our house. That brought me joy. Okay. So, you know, I was thinking, all right, if I'm going to have a catering company, what am I going to name it? A joy to serve catering. Okay. And, um, people, when they hear it, they're like, Oh, I like that name. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> my husband jokes. Well, he don't joke with me because he's serious. But he uh, normally says, don't give me a mum mum plate. Meaning don't pile up my plate uh, trying to fatten me up. Right. Like, I will make sure anybody that I feed is, like, satisfied. Like, okay. you will come and eat at my house. <laughs> a mum mum plate. Yes. And, um, cause you know, uh, my mom be like, you sure that's enough? You sure? <laughs> you, you sure you don't want no more? I, I, baby, you want some more. <laughs> so like, um, and then my grandma, she was very special. She had passed, um, a few years back. Um, but she would always make sure that her grandkids, even her kids, um, had what they wanted to eat. Mm -hmm. Like my dad would come over. He, she'd be like, Steve, you want a cheese steak? <laughs> And go right in the kitchen and make a cheese Aww. steak. And if I wanted something different, she would make me something different. So it's just like in me right. to serve. Um, I don't always, I didn't, I didn't always just serve on as far as food. But um, when I was at my previous church, um, I didn't mind doing things within the ministry. Um, I was on the hospitality committee. And just service is something I love. I volunteer uh, with other nonprofits. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I just love to do. And it was like, well, you know, Why it's not? already something right. that you do, right? Right, right? So, all right, we have the, the cheese and the noodles layered. Okay. So in this bowl, we're going to crack the eggs. Okay. Uh, I'll put it right here. 
And for this size, about three eggs would work. Okay. And if you um, aren't used to cracking eggs, you can crack them in a separate bowl just so you can get the uh, shells out. Yeah. So because this is recent, you've done weddings, you've done birthday parties and mm -hmm. things of that nature. What does your, because you have, you recently had a baby. Yes. So what does, you know, you, you study, you go on Pinterest, things like that. What does that look like for you? Busy. <laughs> Busy work, right? Okay. But because it's something that I love, it fuels me to want to okay. do it even more. So um, being a mom, you definitely have to budget your time wisely. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you might not be able to search and scroll all day, every day, or whatever, you know, with work and everything. And you might just have to stay up a little later at mm -hmm. night to mm -hmm. do it. Like, my son goes to sleep now, and he sleeps through the night. So he'll go to sleep around 9.30. And um, so for to the three eggs, I added the seasonings, which is about maybe a tablespoon or two tablespoons of each seasoning I mentioned earlier. And I'm going to add eight ounces of sour cream and then the pint of heavy whipping cream. Okay. So... I'll wait till he takes a nap. If I'm on a lunch break at work, I'll, uh, you know, search. But I try to make my content days, because I post um, reels of cooking on Instagram. Okay. I try to make them on Saturdays, because my husband normally doesn't work on Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, so while he watches the baby in the living room, mm -hmm. I'm in the kitchen uh, cooking. Um, you know, making sure I have the garnish that I need. And that gives me time to myself to do something that I enjoy. Mm -hmm. And my daughter is starting to get into cooking as well. So she wants to own a bakery. Okay. So we, we've been going to um, dessert presentations and oh. stuff like that. So it's not only make, giving us time to bond, it's also teaching me and her as well because I'm not a baker like there are some desserts that I make but I'm not a baker okay so don't ask me to make a wedding cake <laughs> it ain't gonna come out right <laughs> but yeah just finding those pockets of time because if you can sit and watch tv mm. you can like do things to fuel your dreams right right that's true and um that's true well you have the food, your daughter is the baker. Y'all can open, open Look, up a restaurant. Something. Yeah. I'ma get the spoon. So on Saturdays you will make like a week's worth of content. Um it would either be so I don't post every day. Okay. Because I don't want to commit to a posting schedule of every day. Gotcha. Um because, you know, it can get tiring mm -hmm. and where you don't like doing it anymore because you're trying to, I won't say do something you're not supposed to be doing, but you want, you're trying to learn how to be a social media manager mm -hmm. and all this other stuff. It gets overwhelming. Right. So, um, and if I had my spatula, I would scrape this all, okay. but this enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah. I um I try to at least get uh maybe three meals okay. but different content around those three meals. So maybe I'll do a post on just the side dish. Okay. And then I'll I'll do a reel on that or I'll do a reel on the meat that I cooked and make them individual instead of a whole meal. Right. right. Um and or then I might post the meal picture just to break it up or save it for later. And when I don't have anything to post, cause maybe I was busy that weekend mm -hmm. and I couldn't post the content, but, um, that looks so good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> nice and creamy. Yes. And with the freshly grated cheese, it's yes. extra creamy. Okay. So just making sure that the custard gets down into all the noodles. Okay. 
And you already have your oven preheated to 385. Okay. Why 385? I know people normally do 350. That's the black people way. <laughs> like, you know, when I first started learning how to cook, my chicken was baked at 350. Right. I just feel like it makes a better crust. Sorry. Okay. I mean, we want to check the one that's in the oven. But I just make a, uh, I think it makes a better crust when okay. you put it on a little higher. And um, <laughs> black people. You're supposed to cover it before you put it in the oven, but blame blame me for no foil. Um, so it cooks it better in the oven at, at that temperature. Okay. I think my husband does his at 400. Okay. And just checks it and then take the um, foil off at the end so it can brown on the top. And just like you're baking a cake to check how, it's, how done it is, you can stick a knife or a fork in the center and make sure it's not liquidy. Mm -hmm. It could be creamy, but not like it's the cream you just poured out of the carton, if that makes sense. Okay. And um, before you would put the foil on top, before you put it in the oven, just sprinkle it with a little paprika. If you wanna get fancy, do some parsley, dried parsley. Um, not fresh parsley, cause Parsley still does have a taste to it, even though people like to use it as garnish. And you just put it in the oven. Look how creamy, show, show them again. Look how creamy that looks. Creamy and cheesy, <laughs> creamy right? Creamy and cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna put it in the oven for about 45 minutes to an hour. Okay. And let's check on this. The next five years, I'm not sure where I want to be with a Joy to Serve catering. Because like I said, I looked at a bill and I said, <laughs> oh, we need to pay this. Okay. <laughs> so um, I haven't really thought about it that far. Of course, I want to get um, more skilled in the art of cooking. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to command those high price weddings. Mm -hmm. I want to staff. Um, I know I only want to eventually start doing weddings and corporate catering. Okay. I don't want to do, um, you know, housewarmings and birthday right. parties unless it's a, on a bigger scale. Um, so just making sure that I continue to learn and grow to that capacity where I can have those type of events, where I'm certified enough to have mm -hmm. those type of events. Because, you know, with certain events, they want you to um, possibly bring alcohol or they want you to... Um, make sure you bring your own plates, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. actual china and silverware, and I don't have that yet. So just to learn more and more about the craft and grow in it is what I'm focused on right now, but eventually corporate catering, because with a corporate caterer, um, you have work every day. Okay. Because you know, a job has a meeting, they want you to do a box lunch here and there. So just, um, that is what I see right now, or what I'm working towards. Okay. So, but if God says, you know, put this down and do something else, or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I don't want you to get that big, I want you to come on down, or okay. <laughs> I want you to move to another city and be a private chef, you never know. Right. So, I, I'm open to wherever God leads me with it. And right now, you're tri-state area, so you yes. go to... Philly, Delaware, Jersey. Yes. Okay. I'm close to Maryland, so I can come to Maryland. Okay. I go anywhere you pay the, okay. if the client pays a travel fee. Okay. But okay. um, yeah. So, uh, I'm open and available. Yeah. How many events do you do a month? I would say about one event a month. Okay. Um, and that's not including my, um, my platter sales. Okay. And if I don't have a uh, event that month, I can do a platter sale. I only need like a week's notice to send out to my um, clients. Or I can say, hey, let's just have family time this month. So mm -hmm. I love that flexibility. Um, and th the thing about it is I don't have to do it as mm -hmm. often. Um, it would be nice to grow the business, but um, Right now, I'm just taking it slow because I did just have a baby, yeah. and I'm trying to get you know used to everything. Okay. So one thing um, that you said that I like just learning the craft, yes, growing. 
right? God gives us gifts, but it's not just like, oh, yeah, I can cook, and you just throw yeah. something together. Like, you actually have to go and learn, mm-hmm. right? And faith without works is dead. You can't just... Right, <laughs> right. Yeah, and you talk about you have an LLC. Mm-hmm. You go to demonstrations and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. So how important to you is that? Like, is that growing in knowledge? It's really important. And to be transparent with you, I do have a clothing company. Okay. And... You know, I started the clothing company in 2017. Okay. And I thought by now, I'd be rolling in the money. Right. But it didn't work like that. Um, there's a lot of things that God has been teaching me about the clothing company because at first I was just trying to sell. Mm-hmm. I wanted to sell modest apparel and that was it. Not knowing that God wanted me to teach on modesty. And those years in my business, I learned so much about the business side that it helped me with anything else I've done. Mm -hmm. So I have the knowledge now because I learned it all before and now I can just apply it. And it's just like, because it's a gift, Mm -hmm. it just comes easy to you to, oh, I got to cook for my family anyway. Why not make it pretty, as pretty as I could make it, and then take a picture and serve my family just to start creating a buzz. And that buzz of me cooking for my own family has grown to clients. So, you know, I just look from the failures or the learning lessons from my previous business and I did something different with this business and it's working. Did you go to school for business when you did the clothing line? Nope. No. So nope. to it. Well, <laughs> Google University, yeah. Yeah. YouTube, YouTube University. Yeah. I joined a few masterminds um, based out of Philly. I met some great people, but you know, you start to learn about those masterminds that is not really what it's cracked up to be. So, you know, trial and error. Mm-hmm. And like I said, those failures, those were some of the errors that I made. But you know, I didn't know. Um, I did think you had to go to school for, for everything. Yeah, yeah. So I did try college when I was, when I got out of high school and, um, it just wasn't for me. I went for marketing. I withdrew that first year and it just wasn't for me at that time. Mm-hmm. And, um, I eventually want to go, um, do some kind of training mm-hmm. for catering. I don't know exactly what. Um, I don't think I want to be classically trained. I don't want to go that far. But just like maybe, hey, you know, learn this technique or maybe more of a business side, learn how to price or learn mm-hmm. how to um, do more of the business side of catering than actually cook. Because I can watch a, a video, I can read a recipe and do right. it the same, right? right. Um, but it's just, you know, I would like to learn more about the business side of the food industry because I don't know more about that side. Okay. So how do you get clients? Um, That's interesting. So word of mouth. Okay. um, When I started off just doing platter sales. Okay. And, um, you know, people from church bought from me. And I live in Delaware. Okay. My client base for platter sales started in Philly. So that's another thing. I want eventually that five-year plan. I want to eventually have my clients from Delaware only. Well, majority of Delaware. Um, But word of mouth from, you know, church members. Um, I have a client that's a faithful customer. Like, even if she can't get a platter from me, she'll still send me a cash app during that time. So just those type of people who want to see you grow. I had mentioned to one of my moms in Christ, I had mentioned to her that, you know, I wanted to start catering and she's an event planner. So I got my first wedding through her and she started teaching me a little bit about the business, like vendor finding fees and stuff like that. So I started to pay attention, you know, to her business too. Um, But just word of mouth, a lot of people find me on Instagram. Um... You know, sometimes people inbox me, sometimes they click the book a consultation. So it just, it just, um, lately I've been getting a lot of people from my reels on Facebook. Okay. So a lot of inquiries from those different channels, but word of mouth is the biggest one. Okay. 
That's cool. So how can we find you? If we want to have an event, um, how can we find you? Sure. You can contact me on Instagram. My Facebook page is public, so you can DM me on Facebook as well. On Facebook, I am Danielle Avery. On Instagram, I am a joy to serve catering. So you can send me a DM or is it, there's a link in my bio to book a one-on-one -on -one consultation. It's a 30-minute consultation. We'll discuss your menu, your budget, any kind of event details, like your color scheme. I like to kind of match <laughs> okay. the color scheme. If it's a graduation party, I like to decorate the table for my clients. Sometimes, you know, I'll add in a menu. Mm -hmm. um, just like the little personal touches we'll right. talk about that when your 30 minute consultation and that's the calendly link at calendly.com slash a joy to serve catering and the consultation is free so um i would just i prefer everybody to know their budget mm -hmm. because sometimes that's a big factor into why you know you can't book a caterer or you know it, it becomes like a waste of right. time for um for the both of you, right? right. That's true. So, um, I was thinking about doing like a pricing list. So that's something I would um, do eventually. Learning that side mm -hmm. of the business, but you can find me on Facebook and Instagram, and just DM me or book a consultation through my link. Okay. So, how far in advance does somebody need to book you? I want oh, at least a week. No, at least a week. And I say a week because. Um, the week of is when I'm start is when I do my final preparation for everything. I okay. go food shopping to make sure it's fresh and everything. So at least a week, and I give it a week because just in case somebody has a repass, mm. you know you normally know a week in advance. Right, right. So um, just a week. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's cool. So you said we can find your Joy to Serve Catering on Instagram and yes. Daniel Avery on Facebook. Yes. Any advice that you want to leave with um, any of our aspiring <laughs> chefs or uh, business owners? Any words of encouragement? I would say be coachable. Mm. Um, there was many times in my business I told you about the clothing boutique that I was not coachable. Mm. And I learned some hard lessons because I didn't want to listen. And now as you know, other people are coming to me, how do you start a business? How do you get into catering? They're asking me these questions. And I even had a mentor one time and it's like, she did nothing I told her. And mm. I felt bad because I'm like, well, am I a bad coach or? Mm. And then I was upset because I'm like, I'm giving you everything mm -hmm. and you just don't understand. And I was like, you know, <laughs> right. you was the same way. Mm -hmm. So I would just say be coachable. Let If somebody that has been in the business is trying to teach you, that's why everybody needs a mentor. We, we can't make it on just our own. We need each other. We need our sisters in Christ, our brothers in Christ. We need those people to teach us. And somebody having a maybe an hour long conversation with you will give you more knowledge than maybe you would get going to school mm -hmm. for what you're doing. Cause a mm -hmm. lot of people go to school for it, but when they get in the real world, they don't apply nothing that they learn in school. Cause your job is teaching you the tactics and mm -hmm. the tools and the systems that they use. Right? right. So if somebody is giving you information, use that information, write it down. Like it's funny cause if you know, somebody is speaking a word into my life, I'm like, let me get a paper yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah, I can write yeah. that down because mm -hmm. I want to pray on this. I want to go back to this and mm -hmm. say on such and such, such and such, on mm -hmm. such and such date, someone told me this, this, and this. That's and right. it came to pass or maybe it fell by the wayside, whatever. But right. I want to be able to look back and reference what you told me so that I can implement it in my business, ministry, whatever. That's right. That's right. Uh, I heard a preacher say, a uh, sharp... Uh, what is it? A, a dull pencil is better than a sharp mind. Hmm. Yeah. Because you're constantly yeah. writing. Yeah. Okay. But okay. yeah, because when you write it down, you remember it mm -hmm. as far as like trying to, you know, keep yeah. it up here. And yes. my memory is bad. Yeah. <laughs> Ask me what I did like two weeks ago. It, it goes way. Right. Somebody <laughs> at church was actually like, uh, somebody was there last week that I was trying to um, connect with. So we haven't seen each other in years. And 
did I come to church last week? <laughs> it's so there? bad. Like, yeah. really? But I, I, I didn't say anything, but I know I look puzzled. And I'm like, yeah, because if I try to remember what somebody said to me, I'm going to forget it. And be yeah. like, did y'all hear what she said? And they be like, no, we was praising them for you. Yeah. They was out doing something else. But you have to get the knowledge for yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to... Um, Write it down. If God gives me any kind of download during the day, I'm mm -hmm. writing it down. Yes. I'm taking my husband might think I'm on my phone, but I'm taking out that notepad mm -hmm. and I'm just writing down what God wants me to say to either his people through the real mm -hmm. or if I need to text somebody because they came across my mind. Like I have to do it right then and there or I'm going to forget. Yes. And, and we live in an age of technology where all this information is it's available to us. Absolutely. It's available to us. So Absolutely. any business you want to start, anything that you want to do, it's there. It YouTube, is. YouTube, Google, like it's no excuse. Yes. It's no excuse. Yes. Yes. Do you think our mac and cheese is ready? Let's check. Okay. So we got our macaroni and cheese out the oven. Yes. But I'm going to burn my hand if I don't touch it with a pot holder. <laughs> So this is your finished product. It looks delicious. Now, mind you, I forgot the foil, so it will be more brown on the top when you do it the right way. <laughs> <laughs> but um, this is your finished product, and I personally like the edges because I like it a little bit crispy. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, if you like it more gooey and ooey, you want to <laughs> go for the middle. But um, this is your finished product after about 45 minutes to an hour of being in the oven. Okay. So, Let's I dig will in. serve you first. Is this a joy to serve? Get, look, <laughs> I will serve you first. And Ooh, you can see this steam. Yes. And it's nice and cheesy. Yes. <laughs> it smells good. Thank you. I smell the garlic in it. Yeah. And the seasoning yeah. salt. Mm -hmm. That's what I smell. Okay. You want to say your grace? Yes. <laughs> God is great. God is great. <laughs> in Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> yeah, it, it has a different smell. And you see the cheese coming up from it? Mm. Don't burn yourself. Mmm. This is delicious. Thank you. I never had it with sour cream. I feel like it just makes it more creamy. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can use it or you don't. Okay. But even with the same ingredients, it'll still come out good. It's just a little extra. It's a bomb. A little extra fatness. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm gonna burn my lip. <laughs> it's delicious. So, the ingredient for this dish is gonna be in the description box. Mm -hmm. If you wanna book Danielle, we will uh, also link her contact information. Danielle, on our way out, we just ask that you give us a word of prayer for our viewers. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Well,. Dear Lord, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this day you've yes, made. Yeah. We thank you for your goodness, your kindness, and your mercy. We thank you for just being able to connect as sisters in Christ, connect yes, with um, this show. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, thank you that I was able to help out Sister Jessica with her show, and she was yes, able yeah. to provide the opportunity to me as well. We just thank you for godly connections, people yes, that you want to be in our lives. Lord, continue to direct Jessica's path as yes, she yeah. continues with this um, production company. Give her the the wisdom to know who to book, when to book yeah. them, and just continue to guide her paths. Um, go before her in everything she does. Make ways for her, open doors for her that no man can close, no man can open. Yes, oh God, we thank you. Prepare her for where she's going. And I ask that everyone that watch this is blessed and that when they make this mac and cheese at home, yes. that they enjoy it as well. And we ask this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And that's our show. Remember, with God, all things are possible. Yes. Be blessed. Bye. <laughs>